Hi, I'm Alicia. And I'm Aubrey. And, and this, this is Wine, wine women, women, and Crafts. Boom, boom, wine, women, and crafts. Thank you so much for joining us on our very first episode. We're excited to share this journey with you. For this episode, I am showing you how to make a wonderful fabric face mask like we are all required to wear right now. And I'm showing you how to make this handy dandy pouch to attach it to your keys so you don't leave home without it. Unlike this person right here. But that is another question. Before we get started on the crafting, the, the wine, wine review. review. So Alicia, what is our very first wine we're going to review on the channel? Well, I went with the easy route and chose my favorite. It is a Lambrusco. It's Quite the bottle. <laughs> yes. Um, th this is the only size this store had. So I just went with it considering it was a hefty price tag of $8. <laughs> so it, this is what we've got to work with. It's a wonderful wine and I, I will eventually drink it in the next month or so, but that's okay. It is a Rainite Lambrusco from Italia. It is a soft, lively red wine. So I found it to be light and sweet with a little bit of sparkle. It says small village wineries and individual farmers working together to craft world-class wines while never forgetting their roots and core values. Sounds sweet. It is very sweet. So we're just gonna pour this sucker here. Yeah, well, growing up, my uh, family used to like to go to wineries. And while I was a kid, I would listen to the stories. I didn't drink when I was little at the wineries, don't worry. Um, but I learned how to do a wine taste. The first thing you wanna do is take a look and hold it up to the light. You wanna see if you can see anything through it. Your second part is you're gonna swish it around. I'm not good at swishing my wine. Swish. It just kind of wiggles. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. <laughs> Try not to get it to go out of the glass. But you're gonna swish it around and see if little legs form. I don't know if you can see that, but you'll see little drips that'll come through. Those are called legs and the thicker they are, the more it tells you about the wine. Next, you're gonna do a sniff. It smells like wine. <laughs> and then you're gonna take a sip. Light, sweet, with a little bit of sparkle. Exactly why it's my favorite. So what would be your rating on this one? Definitely a five out of five. It's my favorite. For me, I'm a little bit more of a Pinot Noir kind of gal. So I'm gonna go with a four out of five. It's, but this is a little bit easier to drink on its own where some of my favorites you usually wanna put with food. <laughs> yes. Oh. It's very nice to have while you're crafting because it doesn't get you heavy and down and a little too tipsy, a little too fast. This is nice and light. And we did try to let you know ahead of time what wine we would be tasting. If you tasted along with us, let us know your rating in the comments below. Looking forward to reading them. Shall we get to crafting? Sounds like a plan. These are the steps for the fabric face mask. Step one is to gather your materials. Those materials are a outside fabric. We're using a fun black cat face. The second fabric is a lining fabric. I use plain white. You also need the usual thread, scissors, needles, machine, pins, the usual sewing supplies that you probably already have. I also have elastic. You can cut the elastic to one 22 inch length to tie all the way around your head or two six inch length to put around your ears if you'd rather have it away from the top. But that is my least favorite way of tying the mask because it's not comfortable. Step two is to cut out your fabric. I have a wonderful template that I got from the Craft Passion blog. The Craft Passion blog did a wonderful job establishing this pattern. I only modified it in a few small ways. Uh, for cutting out your face mask from both fabrics, you are using this template. From the outside fabric, you are leaving a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around these three edges of the template. On the fourth edge, which goes towards the ears, you're leaving an inch and a half, generous inch and a half to make that channel for the elastics. On the inside lining fabric, the white fabric in this example, you just need a quarter inch allowance on all four sides. Step three, three, you can do this. Uh, we are sewing the lining fabric first. You're going to sew, I'm going to use my template again to kind of show you where to sew. You're going to sew along the center seam there. And you're also going to turn over the edges on the ear sides just to finish off those raw edges. 
Then you're going to use your scissors in step sort of three and a half to cut little snips, notches on the center curve. Flip it to the right side out and sew a top stitch as close to the center on that curve as possible to make sure that seam doesn't go anywhere. Step four is to do the same exact thing on that center seam on the outside fabric. You don't have to worry about the edges on the ear side. Just sew that center seam, flip it to the right side out, and then sew the top stitch as close to that center seam as possible. One note as you're going through all of these uh, steps is to snip your ending threads as close to the edge of the seam as possible. We'll just get rid of those loose edges as you go through. Otherwise you end up with a whole lot at the end of the project and it's hard to cut all of them all at once. So just keep up with that as you're going through. Step five is when you put both the lining and the outside fabrics together, match up those center seams with the right sides together. So you should see all the flappy edges on the other, on the outsides. You are then going to sew along both the bottom and then along that top curve. Uh, do back stitches on both ends. Step six, I know my numbers, is to turn that uh, piece of fabric, that tube essentially, right side out. And then you're going to top stitch again along both the bottom and that top face curve. Now you effectively have a mask, but it is missing the channels for the elastic on the ear sides. So step seven is to sew those uh, channels for the elastic on the outside fabric. The first part of that is to fold over just a very skinny little bit so you can sew along that raw edge, turning it into a finished edge. and then fold it again to match that finished edge to the lining finished edge and sew that. I sew it four times because I'm paranoid about my elastic channel staying put. Channels do that to both sides. Step eight is to thread the elastic through those channels. If you have the 22 inch piece that goes all the way around your head, I usually start by going through the bottom up to the top and then top to the bottom. And then tying it and you end up with the loops like this, which go all the way around the head. If you have the two six inch pieces, you're just threading one of those through each channel and tying it so it only goes around one ear. Okay. Step nine is to put on your mask and stay safe. So to make your handy dandy pouch, the first thing you're gonna do is gather your materials. In our case, we use this beautiful black cat fabric and my point was to use the cat head as my basis of where I wanted it centered, about how big I wanted it to be. But really you can make it any size you want. The size is going to dictate how much fabric you need, but usually to make this little pouch, it really isn't that much. You could almost use scrap from another project if you really wanted to. 
You want to remember to make sure that you have a little bit of extra on the top. So make sure when you're measuring your fabric, you have an extra about inch to inch and a half on the top. So you have a big enough channel to put your ribbon through coming to your next piece that you need. You need ribbon. This is about 24 inches for the ribbon. This will give you a nice long ribbon so you can make a pretty bow to put it onto your keys. You're also going to need the thread sewing machine, and that's pretty much it. If you intend for something to fit in this pouch of a particular size, you wanna go ahead and set it on the fabric to make sure that you're sizing it right. And you wanna give it about an extra quarter inch on all sides so that when it slips in and out, it's not a tight fit. Otherwise, it'll be really frustrating to get it in and out of the pouch. So for your next step, you're going to cut your fabric. Again, remember to leave some extra space on the top so that you can fold that over and make the channel for your ribbon. After you have your materials cut, meaning the 24 inch ribbon and your fabric, you're gonna move on to your third step. For your third step, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and sew your pouch together on the outside. For instance, on this pouch, you can see on the outsides, I've left a lot of seam allowance because I didn't realize how big I was gonna make this, but you're gonna go along this outside edge right here to start off with. After you've done your outside edge here, the next thing you're gonna do is flip over your corners at about a 45 degree angle. The reason for this is so that the ribbon will go in and out easily and you have a little notch in your fabric at the top so that you can get it in and out and have a nice space for a bow. Otherwise, it can sometimes get lost or bunched and it'll be a little bit frustrating. Next, you're gonna flip over the top and sew over to make the channel. You wanna make sure that you've made it wide enough for your ribbon to go through. In this case, my ribbon is wider than the actual space, but it's okay because it's a very flexible ribbon. If you use one without a lot of play, that could be a problem. As you're going through this section, just kind of make sure that you are being careful not to sew the entire thing closed. We're not making a pillow this time. Um, and I am pulling out the pins and repositioning it about every few inches just to make sure that everything pulls together correctly. Just make sure it's large enough for your ribbon to go through. And then after you've done that, you'll flip it the right side out and run your ribbon through. When you run your ribbon through, the best way i found to do it is to use a safety pin to put on one side so that you've got something solid to sort of push through. Otherwise, you can lose the ribbon sometimes. A paper clip will also work. After you've got your ribbon through, you wanna make sure to burn the ends of your ribbon. If you don't burn the ends of your ribbon, they'll have a tendency to fray. You can sew them, but trust me, it's not worth the aggravation, just burn them. and then you're all set to put your mask in, carry it with you and have it with you at all times. So now you can see our completed projects. I have a wonderful face mask, which I'll put on here. And I showed you how to make this handy dandy little pouch to put it in. So when you're done with your lovely face mask, you just fold it up neatly-ish, <laughs> put it in the pouch. And then you're gonna just tighten it and tie it to your key so you don't leave home without it. Thank you for joining us while we made this fun little craft. If you'd like to see more projects like this, please remember to click like and subscribe. And if you have any ideas for projects, we'd love to hear it. Make sure you put them in the comments. Thank you for joining us on Wine, Women, and Crafts. We will see you again in two weeks. See you then. Bye. Bye. Boom, boom. Wine, women and crafts.